Well, U.S. Air Marshals are a highly trained group of individuals in the federal government with the sole purpose of keeping our skies safe from the threats of terrorism and other criminal activity. You probably would never even know they're on a flight with you until danger unfolded where they might have to spring into action, take down a terrorist threat or some other criminal activity. But we now know, thanks to our next guest and a group of Air Marshals, per both current and former Air Marshals, uh, they're being taken off those jobs. And instead of keeping us safe in the air, they're instead being tasked with assisting illegal immigrants. Yeah, even making sandwiches for illegal aliens at the U.S. southern border. Yes, the federal government taking them off of airplanes and repositioning them at our U.S. border. Our next guest is Sonia Labasco, a former U.S. Air Marshal supervisor who has been blowing the whistle on what is happening here and has been grouped together with a number of other air marshals across the United States in 20 field offices exposing what's happening here. Sonia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing on this. Well, thank you so much, Clay. Thanks for having us and giving us a platform so the American people can can listen to this story and we can continue the support that we need. My pleasure. So can you explain to our audience, maybe I didn't, hopefully I painted a, a, an accurate picture of what the U.S. Air Marshals are supposed to do, but can you maybe dive a little bit deeper for Americans who aren't really familiar what the Air Marshal Service is? Yeah, well, the Air Marshal Service actually has been around since 1961. John F. Kennedy was uh, the president at the time and saw a need for air marshals because of all the political hijackings that had occurred. So in the 60s and the 70s, they ramped the program up. They started off with 18 volunteers in the very beginning. The first 18 were sworn in 1962. And in then Robert F. Kennedy's office, uh, we actually have photographs of some of the original air marshals being sworn in. So during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they ramped the program up tremendously. There was not a flight within the United States that was an, a United States air carrier that did not have air marshals deployed on it. After the late 80s, early 90s, they started depleting the program and transferring resources out of the program to the point where we only had 33 original air marshals on 9-11, the day of 9-11. So we started off with thousands of air marshals. And over a 40-year period, we've lost and went down to to, 90, to just 33 on 9-11. And, of course, we know what happened on 9-11. Uh, they attacked the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and then, of course, unfortunately, United 93 went down uh, in the field. So after that, the government had a huge push to stand our program up. So we had 350,000 applications that were submitted for air marshals after 9-11. And then the government from, it, it's a classified number, but... If you Google or open source, it's around 4,000 that they brought on board uh, right after 9-11. And the main mission today, if someone was applying for a job at the U.S. Air Marshals, I should say maybe not today, that's not a good, not a good question, maybe, I don't know, five years ago, if someone was applying for a job at the U.S. Air Marshals, what would their typical day look like? Well, I mean, you have to blend in with the regular passengers. You have to show up at the airport quite early. I mean, you have to get to a lot of physical fitness and uh, firearms training, you know, we work in a linear environment. So imagine walking down an air, you know, inside an aircraft and having to draw your weapon and make sure you have perfect shot placement. So it's a pretty strenuous job as far as your responsibility. The day in and day out, you look like a regular passenger. You get your ticket, you get on the plane, you put your luggage in the overhead, you get off the plane, you go back to the gate, get another ticket, and then you fly to another location. So it can be pretty grueling as far as day in and day out. But you have to be ready at a moment's notice to take care of a situation if someone's trying to thwart, you know, if you're trying to thwart a hijack and someone's trying to take over a plane, you got to be quick on your feet. Of course, the concerns about terrorism heightened. Uh, now the focus, of course, is on the U.S. southern border. And it seems like the Biden administration is not very concerned about the threat coming across the, the southern border and, uh, and of course, turning their attention to white supremacists in the United States. And they're saying, you know, MAGA supporters, that seems to be the, the greatest threat to the Biden administration right now, Trump supporters. Now you've noticed something along with other air marshals that instead of policing our skies, making sure that Americans are safe on the skies, what did you start to notice among the air marshals in the United States? What was happening? Well, there were two things. I mean, one was our mission. We weren't recognizing the mission that we had had prior uh, to uh, the Biden administration taking office. I mean, air marshals used to be deployed on missions looking for someone trying to thwart a hijacking. Now we're either on the southern border handing out sandwiches or driving migrants to the airport to get on planes that we're not on. That TSA created a special line for those migrants who aren't even identified to get on a plane that the air marshals will not be on. 
or we're following individuals that were in the January 6 uh, uh, National Capital Region during January 6. So if travelers were in uh, the NCR January 5th through the 7th, TSA has put them on a list or a manifest and deemed them a domestic terrorist because they were in a geographic location during uh, January 6. Wait, so just so I understand, air marshals are being basically taken off of aircraft now, being repositioned on the ground? Is that, Am I understanding you correctly? We're being repositioned at the border, and then we're being repositioned to follow a to follow individuals that were in the national capital region on January the 6th, whether you were at the capital or not. You could have just been in the local area. You could have been visiting family. You didn't have to be a participant at the ellipse or at the capital, and you were on this list as a suspected domestic terrorist. I mean, let's talk with, let's start with the, the illegal alien problem. So the U.S. southern border, why, why, why is the Customs and Border Patrol? Why is ICE? Why are those offices not handling this? Why are the U.S. Air Marshals now being repositioned at the U.S. southern border? Well, and they're pulling us down, Clay, and these are, these are the messages they're giving us. That we're doing non-law enforcement duties. They let us know really quick before we're ever deployed there. We are support personnel only, meaning we're supporting the Customs and Border Patrol. We're not considered law enforcement on on the border, we're considered support personnel. I want to make that part clear. So we're not doing any type of duties other than support duties that an NGO or any other uh, contractor could do. So we're not doing any type of law enforcement duties. Are you armed? Are they carrying a, a, a firearm? Sometimes they are. Sometimes they lock their firearms up. It depends on if they're they're in a secured area. But most of the time, they're armed. But they're, they're given a brief, briefing packet. When we're down on the border, every air marshal that's there give, is given a briefing packet that they are not to engage, that they are support personnel only, and if they can contact Border Patrol if they need to report something that a law enforcement officer needs to handle. So they're at the border under the umbrella of the, the Border Patrol, given orders to support the Border Patrol, and what exactly are they doing? We, 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 we said sandwiches, but that's not a joke. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's something you've been witnessing. You're handing out sandwiches? And, and water. They're handing out sandwiches and water and clothing or items that may be needed. They're driving uh, illegals to the, to the hospital and they're waiting hours and hours for them to receive treatment. And just know that we travel in teams. Air marshals don't travel singular. So if you're driving people to the hospital, you're going to have two air marshals. If you're driving people in a van, you may have four air marshals. And they're going to sit and they're going to wait until that medical attention is received. And then they're going to pick up that, that group and they're going to drive them back to the border patrol station. So uh, we're doing nothing of value. Unfortunately, you know, our borders destabilized and now our aviation is destabilized. So we've got both our flanks open right now. We also understand, of course, that many illegal immigrants are being ferreted around on airplanes, on commercial airplanes. Are U.S. air marshals being used for that task as well? We're not on those flights. We're, so, we're either on the border or following J6ers. We're not on those flights at all, Clay. No. So the reports about United Airways, Delta Air, Air, Airlines in the past that have come out over the past few months, illegals being carried, trafficked, moved around the United States to different cities, U.S. Air Marshals, which would normally be their job watching out for these individuals. They're not even, allowed, they're not even on those flights. These are being handled by NGOs and other, other government entities and ferreting people around the United States. That is correct. We have no involvement. We have no involvement whatsoever. We should be monitoring, especially the human trafficking and what's happened to these children. 85,000 children missing right now that came across the border and no one's looking for them. So it's really, it's really devastating as a law enforcement officer to know that you have these abilities, but you're being handcuffed by your own agency not to do your job. Where are these orders coming from? These are coming straight from TSA Administrator David Pekoski for the Air Marshals. I mean, Pekoski has known uh, we have filed complaints with DHSOIG. We've been to Office of Congressional Ethics. We've been at the oversight committees. You name it, the council. We've been fighting this issue for over three years, trying to make a change. And we help supply information for the impeachment of Mayorkas. I'm very proud that he got impeached. He should have got impeached long ago. We should have never waited this long. But he is impeached. And these are the things that we have to do because we're losing we're losing our nation, Clay. If you look around, we're losing our nation. We've already lost in so many ways. It's going to take generations for us to regain what we have given up as of today. Yeah, we have lost so much. 
you know, you're watching and you're really watching the United States in full scale decline. These U.S. air marshals, we know that you, as you mentioned, classified the number of air marshals, roughly maybe 4,000. How many of those 4,000 would you say have been pulled off of U.S. domestic flights and are now being used for border related issues or going after January Sixers? Well, I can tell you this after, you know, a lot of the men and women came on after 9-11. Uh, so they had their 20 years in. Many have had over 20 years in, and they've retired. They've gotten out because it's just absolutely disgraceful to have your only law enforcement component that can protect the American people from another 9-11, and then you're not allowed to do that job. So we've had a mass retirement in the last six months. We're nowhere near 4,000. That number that's that was a number after 9-11. We're nowhere near close to that capacity today. I can assure you, you you would have better odds of winning the lottery than you would to have an air marshal on your aircraft. So let's talk about the J-6 part of this, going after Americans who just happen to be there in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. What orders are, I know you're retired, obviously you have deep connections though at these different field offices and current, currently employed U.S. federal marshals. What, are, what orders are they being given to go down and track these individuals down and arrest them or just watch them? Yeah, this is what's really scary about this. Uh, January the 11th, uh, 2021, uh, Chairman Benny Thompson wrote a letter to the TSA administrator, David Pekoski, and advised him that he wanted uh, the administrator to disrupt the travel of the white supremacists and the domestic terrorists who participated in the Capitol riots. Well, Mr. Pekoski had his team, the incident coordination section, run a manifest and these are these are probably hundreds of thousands of names. I mean, people that fly in and out of D.C. In a, in a three or four day period. That list was given at the request of the FBI. The FBI wanted this manifest from TSA. So TSA gives the manifest, but they go one step further. They take the same manifest and they ingest it into a national security database for TSA. So now anyone's information that was on that list has been put out into a law enforcement uh, atmosphere. We don't know how far that goes. But if you're listed on that list, you are you are considered a suspected domestic terrorist. You are a 102, period. You are considered a 102. And for a congressperson, how is, a, how is one congressman who chaired the January 6th committee later have the power to write a letter and change the entire trajectory of our mission in deploying, looking for real domestic terrorists that harmed our country? How does one congressman have the power to do that? I still want someone to answer that question for me. It's a great question. It's, it's really heartening to hear that Americans are now the biggest threat to America. This is the focus now of our federal government is watching after Americans going after Americans for domestic terrorism. That's the focus. Um, so when you talk to these other U.S. Air Marshals, ones that are currently employed, what are they saying to you? What are they hoping will change about this? What are they hoping... Uh, what message are they hoping uh, to, to get out to the American people? Number one, that they haven't forgotten what the original mission is. We all saw what happened on 9-11. We saw Americans jumping out of the top of the Twin Towers. That was a horrible sight. It was, it was a day that uh, our country had come together, and we hope that we can bring our country back together because we were one at once after 9-11, and we need to go back to that, looking out for each other and looking out for our border, looking out for our aviation security, I mean, Christopher Ray just testified again that we're blinking red. We're blinking worse than we did prior to 9-11. What does that really mean? It means we're in serious trouble. We're right. in serious danger. Well, let me ask you about that. I mean, that we heard that story over the, the weekend, this blinking red, this concern that we're under a national security threat of the highest order right now. What do you make of that? Um, You've been around this a long time. Is it is it a threat that's coming across the U.S. southern border? Is it something else? What, what do you, your radar, how does your radar read this? It's all, Clay, it's all the above. I mean, we're worried about terrorists. They're already in our country. Right. I mean, look at the known gotaways. Who do you think part of that known gotaways? If you just did 10% of those non gotaways as bad guys, we're already, in, we're already infiltrated in our country. Uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda have already made statements. They're going to attack the United States again. But they're going to be a lot, a lot more conditioned this time when they do. They're looking for new ways to attack us. So those are words we're not hearing anymore, right? What happened to Al-Qaeda and ISIS? They're still alive and well. That's what happened to them. They're still plotting and planning their next attack on us. 
They, they, they wanted this to happen in 2001 and they want to happen again. It's the grand crude to get, to get the aircraft and to outdo Osama bin Laden. That's the goal here. And people have forgotten what that mission was, but we haven't. The air marshals have not forgotten. Sonia, where can people learn more about your mission and the message you're trying to get out for the U.S. Air Marshals? I'm on Twitter at uh, my last name first, Labasco Sonia. You can find us on our website, uh, airmarshalnc.com. That's airmarshalnc.com. We have an info page. Send us an email. We can put you on a newsletter list. But just let the American people know that we're fighting in Congress. We're, we're there uh, every other week fighting and trying to bring some sense back into putting our air marshals back on the planes where they belong. Well, thanks for the work you're doing. Sonia, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you sharing your story. Thank you, Clay. Thanks for having us. Have a great day. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.